Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. We today have got the most incredible chocolate cake for you and I have removed half the fat and 30% of the sugar, but it still tastes amazing. Right, so we're gonna make this delicious cake. I've told you all about it. I've got your attention. I've got my little helper here. We're gonna make cake, chocolate cake. Yay! Yeah? <laughs> right, okay, so what I wanted to do was actually just break, show you how easy it is. Um, but I'm gonna show you what we're not putting into the cake. So, I've got 125 grams of butter or margarine, depending on what you wanna use. Pop that into there, sunshine. I've got Thomas straight in to help me today from school. Right. Now normally with a cake, you add 250 grams of butter or margarine, 250 grams of sugar, four eggs, 250 grams of self-raising flour, and that will make you a Victoria sponge cake. Now I've removed that much fat out of the cake. It's quite a significant amount, isn't it, Emily? Mm. Just lower it a bit. Yeah? A little bit higher. There we go. So half of it gone, and I've replaced it with some California prunes, okay? So all we've done is just pop those straight in with the butter or margarine. Now, because we've taken half the fat away with and replaced it with a fruit, it's actually a little bit sweeter, so that allows me to reduce some of the sugar. So I've got 170 grams of brown sugar here, and then I've got 80 grams here. So together, that would make my normal 250 grams, right? We're taking that away. So we've taken 80 grams of sugar, that's nearly a third of the sugar out of the recipe, all right? Because we've used California prunes. I've been working with California prunes probably for about eight years now, so I've kind of learned how to cook with them how to use them in recipes to my advantage. So, in with our brown sugar. So, are you going to um, mm -hmm. do the deed? Yeah. Do you know how to use this? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, in and then just start to mix. Hold on to that Perhaps. and mix them together. All right. This could either go beautifully or horrendously <laughs> wrong. Couldn't it, Thomas? Yeah. Hey? You're enthusiastic if nothing else, aren't you? <laughs> right, so I have got two bananas here. How appetizing do these look, Emily? Mm. These have come from, they got become too ripe, we didn't eat them, we put them in the freezer. We've brought them out of the freezer, and then all I'm gonna do is simply peel them and add them to the mix while Thomas is beating it up. <laughs> and that helps us have a really nice moist cake. The flavour kind of is secondary, really. It just gives us texture and moisture. How are we doing? Good. Keep going. Let's turn it up. More power. More power! As Tim Allen once said. Go, full power. All right. Keep going. Right, let's just turn that onto there. So. By whisking and beating together the California prunes, the margarine and the sugar, it's kind of broken the, the prunes down. Not completely, but they've incorporated and we've amalgamated the fat, the sugar, the prunes, and then we've also put those frozen bananas in just to give us a really nice texture. Now, all we need to do is add four eggs. So put your mixer back in, son, on slow speed, and I'll put the eggs in. Add them one at a time, really important. So, Whoa. mix that one together. You can do it one-handed. I can. A bit faster. Where are you going left-handed, are you? Light like style. No! <laughs> He's a little bit left-handed. And left-footed. Are you? Yeah. He's both. We've taught him to be two-footed. Makes for a better footballer. I'm right. I'm going back to right now. Oh, yeah. He's going to keep swapping. You both. Not this. There you go. 
So that's two eggs in. Now, if you want the recipe, scan the QR code on the bottom. It will take you to my website, petersidwell.com, or you can download our free app, Peter Sidwell's Kitchen, um, and you can get all our recipes and all our programs on there. Right. Third egg in, Thomas. That's a lot of eggs. Four eggs. So this is a basic Victoria sponge cake. But with prunes. But we've used prunes, we've taken out half the fat, a third of the sugar. Last one. Here we go. What we're trying to make is a delicious chocolate cake. You're going to like this, I promise. When's the chocolate being added? In a minute. Oh, there. Here we go. Stop. Right. Yep, turn that. Right, now. I want a tablespoon of cocoa powder in there, please. <laughs> Just put a tablespoon in. Go for it, yeah. Just give it a sprinkle it in, like style. <laughs> right. Got 250 grams of self-raising flour. Now, Carlos, on the edit, will put down the side, probably this side, if you don't mind, um, a recipe to turn all-purpose flour into self-raising flour. It's really simple. Just need to get the blend right and the ratios. Right, you're going to, um, let's do two cocoa powder, actually, because we put the banana in, which is adding moisture. Normally, when you add cocoa powder to a cake mixture, you would maybe take 10 grams of flour out and put 10 grams of cocoa in because it, it really does zap the moisture from baking. Whereas, because we've added the frozen bananas, we've added more moisture in. So you're gonna sieve that through, Tom. So lift it up a little bit and give it a little tap on the side. There we go. This recipe will make, we're gonna cook it in a loaf tin, but you could make little buns, muffins, uh, Victoria sponge round cake sandwich tins, you could do whatever you like with it. So it's really versatile. Should I just tip that? That's fine. Now, fold together. So do you remember how I taught you to fold? Mm. So you turn the bowl one way and the spoon the other way. All right? So the way Dad does it is that way. Yeah? Okay. So if you do it that way, you would do it that way. Yeah. Get it? That's it. We need to keep the but we need to keep the bowl in the right place for Emily. Yeah, now you keep it in the perfect spot. Perfect. No, I got it wrong. That's all right. Now you can start to turn it. Now just sort of stir it gently. What you don't want to do is really vigorously mix this, which is why we've taken the, the electric mixer away because it will overbeat it, it'll overwork it. The gluten will be developed and the cake will become quite tough. We want a nice, delicate sponge. How are we doing? Good. We're good? Yeah. Marvellous. <laughs> oh, is it, oh, you're not strong enough. There you are. Right, you get the loaf tin then. Just there. So we've lined a two pound loaf tin. Nice and simple. Right. Okay, so look. It is a normal sponge cake as if Nothing had ever been changed. All right, are you gonna help me, Tom? I'll help. You. You're gonna hold the sponge cake. Now remember, if you have any questions about today's episode as well, please do post them in the comments below. And if you think you know anyone who might like this recipe, bake it for them. Or if you can't do that, share the recipe with them on Facebook. I would also say as well, before Emily does, you could swap out the uh, flour for gluten-free flour in this recipe. No problem at all. Stolen your thunder there, didn't I? Uh, and you can use dairy-free margarine too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yep. Oh yeah, well, we know a cat, don't we, from Cat's Kitchen, yeah. and she uses the vegan margarine. Is it? I think it's Vitalite as well, which yeah. is um, plant-based. A lot of margarines are vegetable over yeah. as well, so. And you can use, Low fat margarine as well, if you want to. If you really want to cut the fat down in this recipe, use low fat margarine. Use the California prunes to replace the margarine as well. So you're getting a cake. You get that kind of chocolate hit, but you've massively reduced the fat, reduced the sugar, but 
also, and I think most importantly, you've increased the fiber content of a cake and you've turned it from an indulgent treat to something that's giving you more fiber, which can only be a good thing. Right, Thomas, you're gonna put it in the oven for me. Which one? The one that's on. <laughs> yeah, pop it into there. So we've got a preheated oven, 180 degrees, no, 170 degrees, sorry. Um, that's, yeah, pop it in. And that's gonna cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. And once it comes out, we'll leave it to cool. And we're gonna put a little um, orange chocolate icing glaze on it. But actually, if you don't want to, it will be de equally delicious without it. Right, okay, I've been for a wet and wild dog walk while this cake has baked. 170 degrees, 35 minutes, and it is ready. It looks and tastes and smells delicious. Look, it's a proper cake. Come on, Thomas. Right. What do you think? It smells really good. Pip's so, no, Pip's not allowed it. Don't let Pip have any. Right, so, have a little smell of that. It smells good. It smells like mm. a chocolate cake. Looks like a chocolate cake. Half the fat, third of the sugar removed. Easy. Right, let's get a quick bowl and let's make a touch of icing sugar, of icing, Thomas. All right? So, because we removed a third of the sugar, I feel like we're allowed a little bit of icing on there because we're making a healthy cake. Well, healthy-ish. So, a couple of tablespoons of sugar, a little bit of cocoa powder to make it chocolate icing, yeah? Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Right, you mix that together. Right, I've got a couple of satsumas left here. Right, squeeze that in. Good making chocolate orange. Yeah, a little bit of orange in there. I think chocolate and orange will work really well. So just squeeze those oranges in. So that's two oranges I've put in. There we go. And then give it a little mix. Keep mixing. Keep going. Right, so just give that a nice stir together. So all we've done is icing sugar, bit of cocoa powder, not too much because it can be quite bitter if, if you use too much cocoa powder and then just squeezed in the juice of a couple of satsumas that we had left kicking around the bottom of the fridge just to give it a nice chocolate orange flavour. It's optional and you can do as you like. You could add coffee ice into it, you could add just plain chocolate ice into it, or none at all, to be honest. Right, are you ready? Yeah. So should we spoon a little bit on? We don't want loads. Yeah? See, look, looks like chocolate, doesn't it? Yeah. Doesn't look healthy. <laughs> I know, you wouldn't know, would you? But it's full of fibre, it's got California prunes in it, it's got bananas in it. But it looks like a chocolate cake. There you go. Ooh. <laughs> no? Oh, Thomas, right. you missed your chance. Let's have a little taste, yeah? Mm -hmm. We'll go for the end piece and then we'll let the rest set. See if you can tell it's got fruit in it. I don't think you'll be able to look at that. I right. can see a bit. There you go. Have a little taste of that. I'll have a taste. And I know Emily and Carlos will. Yeah. Right, there we go. What do you think? Mmm. There you go, Emily. Oh, thank you. Have a go on that. Oh, I've got good Are you going to give that piece to Carlos? Go on then, and I'll tell everyone where to get the recipe. Right, if you want the recipe, in fact, if you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and I will answer them as best I can. If you want the recipe for this California prune chocolate cake with half the fat removed, third of the sugar removed, Go to my website, petersidwell.com. You'll find it there or scan the QR code, download the free app, get it all there. Thank you very much for watching. Thomas, thank you for helping. Yeah. Now have I converted you onto chocolate cake? Yeah. <laughs> Say goodbye. Bye. Bye-bye.